How are you today? We now move on to Chapter 5, A Generic Approach to Strategic Management. In my opinion, this is by far the most important chapter in the book. It is this chapter which will give you the tools to conduct a strategic analysis of any firm, irrespective of its products, its markets, its scale or its location. Because this is the key chapter and because there is so much in it, it is not possible for me to make a podcast which is sufficiently comprehensive to give you the detail contained in the chapter. This really is an overview of the chapter and you will need to read it to get the detailed techniques. This is the way I would normally conduct uh, a course on strategic management. I would give all the participants this table and say this is a company called Company X. Here's certain details about it, about its sales, its market share, about its plant and equipment, about its leadership, about its market size, etc, etc. And what I want you to do is to make an assessment of this company and you have to come up with a single answer and the single answer is yes, I would invest in this company or it might be no, I would not invest in this company. Here's some additional information which may help you. It actually doesn't matter what the industry is, but I can tell you. It's in a construction related market and that's all you need to know. The second is about quality. Quality is always assessed relative to competitors and it can only be one of three things. It can be superior or equivalent or inferior. And finally, additional information about price. If your price, of, sorry, if company X's price is more or less equal to its competitors, it is 100. If it's 10% above its competitors, it's 110. And if it's 10% below its competitors, it is 90. So you have to make a strategic analysis of that company and decide whether or not you would be an investor in it. Just a couple of uh, other things. What's your answer? Are you going to invest? Or are you going to not invest? Two things you mustn't do. You mustn't say, I'm not quite sure. That's sitting on the fence. And you mustn't say, I need some further information. That is all you're getting. Let me go on to more to do with the meat of the chapter now. I'll come back to that later. Don't worry. I actually see huge connections between sport and business. And in sport, we're really only interested in winners. If you're playing a sport, you need to be a winner. And if you're associated with the sport, you need to be able to pick winners. Let's have a look at a real winner now in the sport of horse racing. Here he is. It's Frankie de Torre. I don't know too much about horse racing, but I know that this jockey has been fantastically successful in the United Kingdom and elsewhere. And I'm going to tell you something about Frankie de Torre. I actually, if I engage in a horse race with Frankie de Torre, will always beat him as long as it's over the flat. No jumps. Don't want to do jumps. And the way that I will beat him is I will select the horses. And the horse that I will select for myself is this one, which is a rather fine looking animal, I think. And the horse that I will select for Frankie is this one. And I would maintain that as long as I can pick the horses, and these are the types of horses that I pick, I will always beat them. And there's a lesson there for us. If Frankie de Tory is mounted on a cart horse, I will win. If, if I am, especially if I am on a thoroughbred. This applies to business in the following ways. There are certain businesses and they are cart horse businesses. No matter how much you try, no matter how much you work, you are not going to change a cart horse business into a thoroughbred. Looking at it more optimistically, there are certain businesses which are thoroughbreds. And you don't have to be an especially good manager to do well. These businesses are structured in such a way that even the most average manager will do okay if he's in a thoroughbred business. And that's what we are about today. 
trying to discern whether a business is a cart horse or a thoroughbred. Let me look at another connection between sport and business. That is golf. And you see a photograph of the world number one in golf, Tiger Woods. And in terms of that, we're really only interested in winners. We want to see Tiger Woods winning. We need to be a winner like Tiger Woods. We need to pick winners. And it's the same in business. Let me take that a little further. I talked about this in a previous podcast. I've already explained how your golf handicap returns to your par or your handicap over time. That sometimes you play better than your handicap. Sometimes you play worse than your handicap. And over the long run, you'll average your handicap. And again, as I, in terms of golf, there are some assumptions which I think are largely true about what determines a player's level of success. First of all, there are some long-term factors which don't change over time. Your natural ability, your age, your dedication, the amount of coaching you've had, the number of competitions and the severity of the competitions that you have entered in your golfing career. These determine your handicap. And then there are some short-term factors that influence performance on the day. Do you have a hangover? What's your mental attitude? How fit are you? How healthy are you? What's your hunger to win? And these determine if you're above or below par. We also have a similar situation in terms of return on capital employed. Every business is structured in such a way that it has a particular expected or par return on capital employed, but it won't always hit that. Over time, this will vary and sometimes the company will behave in such a way that its profits are way above its par and then over time, they will sink towards par and then they will be below par for some time until remedial action is taken and then they will fluctuate around par over the long term. The view of PIMS is the following. There are certain long-term factors that determine every business's profits. In fact, there are what could be called four major generic factors and these determine every business's long-term par return on capital employed. But there are also some short-term factors that influence businesses' current profits and either put them up or put them down. That could be the particular quality of management at any point in time, the degree of motivation, the degree of competition, shorter-term factors. And these determine if your profitability or return on capital employed is above or below par. Let me talk about how to win in every business. You should apply the four long-term generics. We look and see what they are very shortly. That's absolutely key. And then look at the short-term influences. Before the rules though, a crucial consideration. Here it is. Surely, surely every business is different. Are you saying that for example, The cut flower business is the same as the cement business, is the same as the locomotive business, is the same as the automobile business. Every business is different. Well, you know, in life, you're allowed to say, yes, they are different, and no, they're not. So you can be simultaneously correct with the answer yes and the answer no.